everyone and thanks for checking out this video on the Cohesity YouTube channel. My name is Chris Colotti and I'm a field CTO here at Cohesity. And what I want to do is show you today our new site continuity DR Runbook workflow product. And there's going to be a couple things we're going to go through here. Uh, but first and foremost, you need to make sure that you've been provisioned for this. And once you have been, you can log into Helios as I am already logged in here. And you'll see this new site continuity button in your navigation screen. And that's where we're going to start today. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to actually click on site continuity. And when this is brand new, you'll see there's a few steps we have to take. It's a two-step wizard. And we have to create something called the data pool. And then we have to create uh, our DR plans. So the first thing I'm going to do here is go ahead and click create data pool. I'm going to give this uh, this data pool a name. So video video pool. Now this is where it gets really cool. So now we're into this new UI that we've created where it's a drag and drop editor to create this uh, data pool. And what a data pool is, is it's basically your source site uh, with what we call a data set. And the data set will point to different sources uh, and then we can select objects. So basically a data set is a grouping of objects, mostly virtual machines. So we could have a data set for database servers. We could have a data set for application servers. We could have a data set for AD servers. And each of these can be different and then we can apply different policies to them. So the very basic setup is I'm gonna add a site and I'm gonna pick my primary site and I'm actually going to go ahead and grab a data set and drag it, drag it over. And you'll notice these things kind of fit together, right? They're pieced together. Uh, like puzzle pieces. And I'm going to call this my test set. And we're going to go ahead and add a data source. And here you can see it's already pre-configured for virtual machines. Now I've got two and I'm actually going to pick my, uh, what this one is my primary. This one's my DR obviously. Uh, and we'll use that one later. So I'm going to go ahead and pick my demo data set. So at this point now what I'm going to do is select my objects within that source. So we're going to drag this up into the puzzle and we're actually going to search for by folder and I have a specific folder that I want to grab uh, which is a group of site continuity test VMs. I'm just going to select that whole folder and now I'm going to hit add and we'll see we have four objects selected. At this point I'm just going to go ahead and hit create and we'll move on to the next step. And the next thing is we're going to go ahead and create a DR plan. Uh, you'll notice we haven't done anything on any Cohesity clusters yet, uh, and that's because we've pre-configured all that on the back end. You've got to actually just have your primary cluster and your failover cluster, uh, and you've got to have those connected uh, and, and to the same sources, and that's about it. All this is documented. Uh, we're kind of assuming you know that gets read in the documentation for the purposes of the video. So let's go ahead and create a DR plan. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to call this uh, video plan. And again, we're going to be brought to another version of this drag and drop UI, where now you can actually see we've got sites, we've got data pools, which is what we configured, we've got targets, time delays, protection profiles, all of this cool stuff. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to add a primary site. And that would be the place where we start with our data pool. So we're going to actually grab data pool. And what we're going to get is a selection of the available data pools. So in this case, we've got our video pool. Um, we can only add one data pool to any given DR runbook, which is why you, in this case it's pulling through the one data set. But if we had five or 10 or two or three data sets, the data sets that were part of the data pool that we previously created would show up here to perform operations against. Next thing we can do is we can add things like time delays and we can add them after, or we can add them before we can do anything we want with these time delays. So in this case, we're not going to use any time delays. I've taken them out, but you can add those as you see fit. Uh, we can also add scripts. So these would be pre-configured scripts that we want to run on the primary site, which could be things like stopping services. Um, you can add these scripts in, into the system uh, by just clicking add new script and creating it. Uh, we can also add arguments. But again, we're not going to add any scripts for the purposes of this. So I'm going to drag that one back out. So those are the things you can do uh, within these objects. And then the last thing we have to do is we actually have to add a protection profile to this data pool. So this one will get dropped in, and here is where we're actually going to create our data uh, data protection job. So we're actually going to go ahead and just, for argument's sake, set this one to three hours and set this one to one hour. We're going to leave the protection start time as the default, uh, and now we're actually done with the primary site. Now we, all we have to do is add our DR site. So this one's actually pretty simple as well. So we're going to drag DR site over, and in this case we're going to add our target. Uh, you can see it's already set up for a virtual center, which is what we want. Uh, we can do cohesity clusters, but today uh, we're going to show a virtual center. 
And now we're going to pick our failover site. So here we're now going to enumerate uh, both of the virtual centers again, but in this case, I'm going to pick my DR virtual center. Now we create what's called a resource pool. And the recommendation here is to create at least two resource pools, if not more during this process. And that's because we have the capability of doing a full failover or just a test failover. And during a test failover, I actually want to isolate my VMs. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a test failover profile and I'm going to pick my data center. I'm going to pick my compute cluster. I'm going to pick one of my data stores. In this case, I'm actually going to pick this demo isolated network because I want to make sure they're isolated. Here, we can then add additional credentials to run a post script uh, that would be sitting somewhere on the, on the VM prior to it being failed over. And then we can actually run that script afterwards. Now for IP management, we actually have a couple of choices. We can do DHCP. Uh, more importantly, we can do static, and there's a couple options I want to discuss under static. We can keep the original IP address, which in my environment, when I, when I do the next profile, I'm going to use that because I actually have NSXT running, uh, and I actually have the segment stretched. So I'm able to, in my case, use the same IP address on the other side. You may be in the same scenario. We can also create network mappings. So I'm not going to go through this, but you can show your source network, and you can map it to a target network. Uh, and then you can set your gateways and DNS servers. So that's very useful. And lastly, you can go ahead and assign IP addresses to each individual machine uh, by using a pool of them and you know use uh, the same subnet and again, DNS servers. For the purposes of isolating these, I'm just gonna use DHCP just so we can show how it functions in the test failover. Uh, and I'm gonna put in my DNS servers and my DNS suffix. and I'm gonna save this profile. So I'm gonna go ahead and click save. And now I'm gonna actually add another profile for a full failover. Uh, I'm not gonna execute the full failover, but I'm gonna show some of the options and I wanna have this second profile here. So we'll do a real failover. And again, I'm gonna pick my data center, my DR compute cluster. And in this case, I'm actually gonna use my demo routed network because that one actually would be used when we shut down the virtual machines and send them over. And in this case, I'm going to go static and I'm going to actually keep the original IP address because I want to actually use the same IP address once it's failed over because in my environment, I'm able to do that. I'm going to put in my DNS servers and again, my DNS su suffix. And I'm going to save this one. So now we've got everything configured to actually get this uh, activated. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to hit create and I'm going to, I'm actually going to hit activate later because I want to show something, but you'll notice under protection options, uh, continuous data protection has already been enabled and that's done based on your settings for your RPO and your RTO. Uh, hot standby is something that'll come later. So let's go ahead and do activate later. So this shows up and you'll, you'll see it here now in the disaster recovery plans. And you don't have, you haven't created anything yet because it's just sitting is not ready. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go ahead and show you uh, the cluster itself and just show the data protection jobs. And you'll see here, there's a bunch of job names There's about 14 of them. What we're going to see is a new job get created. So I'm going to jump back over to site continuity. I'm going to go to my DR plans and I am going to go ahead and activate this. And again, it will show me my protection options, which I'm not going to change, and I'm going to hit activate. So as this starts to activate, what we will see on the primary cluster is we'll actually see a job get created. You can see here it says uh, that it's actually done some work, and it says that failover is ready. And if we actually go over to that primary cluster, we're going to see a new job that has now been presented under the protection items here called DR plan, which wasn't there before. Now this job is gonna run its initial uh, configuration, take snapshots, do backups of the VMs that were selected. Uh, and we will also see when it's completed that on the DR side, there will be a corresponding job as well. So here it is uh, on the DR protection jobs. So we're gonna let this run and let it sync up and we'll come back to this here in a second. What I do wanna point out while this is running is I actually wanna dig in uh, real quickly into the protection policy that got created automatically based on our selections previously. And what I want to show here is that we are doing a backup every 30 minutes and retaining it for a week. We're, we have enabled continuous data protection and retaining that for eight hours. And we've also uh, started replicating to the DR site. Now, 
this policy gets created based on our inputs. However, we have to previously, I mentioned in the documentation, you have to have some, some precursor things done, like actually connecting the two clusters together in order to do replication. Since that's already there, this all gets pre-configured for us. So let's continue to watch this and come back when it's complete. All right, so here we can see that the DR plan uh, with policy is complete. It's met its SLA. It's done its replication, which means we're actually in a state that we can do a full failover or a test failover. So let's take a look at the two options and then we'll decide which one we're going to do, which will be a test. But if I come back over to my DR site and I see now I've got failover ready, uh, my sites are primary to failover. I've got my 26 minute RPO. Under the menu here, we've got three different things. Obviously, delete will remove this plan and we can start over. Failover is a full failover, test is a test failover, and view just allows us to see the configuration within the DR plan. So let's look at the different options between these, the, the two failovers, between failover and test, and then we'll talk about what we're gonna show in the test. So if you were to do a full failover, you get different options from test, which allows us to pick our cluster, pick our profile. Now we created two profiles, if you recall, one for test that isolates the network and one for real, which actually maintains the same IP address and puts it on the same NSX segment. When we decide to do that, we can reverse replicate and protect. We can also do what's called a, a, a planned failure or planned failover where we shut down the virtual machines at the site before failing them over, run any scripts that were on there, uh, and then we actually do the failover. We can also take the option of continuing on any errors, and we can see which ones that we want to recover and what their recovery points are. We can even change the recovery points for individual machines if we needed to, or we can run them all from the same snapshot time. So for a full failover, it's a lot more involved. With a test failover, uh, there's fewer options. Essentially, we're gonna pick our target and we're gonna pick our test profile and we're gonna kick it off. But before I actually hit test failover, let's go look at vCenter just to show that there is no virtual machines on, on the DR site. So here's my DR compute cluster. You can see here, there's no virtual machines running in it whatsoever. It's just a four node cluster waiting, ready to accept failover. So let's go ahead and click that failover button and come back. We'll bounce between the two so we can see what's happening. So I'm gonna go ahead and click test failover. And now we'll show that this has initiated a failover and we can start to actually watch more of it in vCenter. So what's gonna happen in vCenter first is we're gonna actually mount a data store to present those virtual machines on and start to bring those VMs into uh, vCenter's inventory and power them on. Here we can see they've been brought into inventory, powered on fairly quickly. And what will happen next is our, our standard instant mass recovery process, which will actually start to storage vMotion these to their, to their primary storage. So if you recall, when we configured our, uh, our policy, we said, hey, we wanted these on either our Nimble or our Pure Array. In this case, they're now currently running on that temporary data store, but with everything cohesity, what's gonna happen next is we're gonna actually do the storage vMotion of these to bring them over, and we should see that process start. Here we can see our relocate job for all four of our virtual machines, which are now showing in inventory. And when this relocation is completed, the temporary data store will be removed and we'll come back to the Cohesity side and we should be able to see a teardown button so we can tear down the test. So we would only tear this down once we did some user acceptance testing or, or other items to make sure the VMs were able to be connected to and logged in. The other thing I'll point out is if I pick one of these virtual machines, we should see that it was in fact connected to my isolated network. So in a full failover, you remember we configured a profile to use the, the routed network. So these VMs are fully isolated uh, even though they have the same machine name and the same inventory name uh, on the other virtual center, uh, we don't want to have a conflict between, between what was running as the primary and what's running for this test. So let's let this run and complete. Now that the storage vMotion process is completed, we can see the temporary data store has been removed. And if we go back over and look at our VMs, uh, these are now running on the Nimble as we initially requested. So if we go do the last step, which is the teardown, we'll do that from the, the Cohesity side and we'll actually see how easy that is. And we'll assume that our testing has been completed on all these virtual machines. So here back on our DR plan within Cohesity, we, uh, site continuity, we can see that the teardown is now ready to complete. Uh, and it's as simple as coming back into our menu and clicking teardown and we'll be able to watch all of that stuff uh, disappear. Of course, we do have a secondary confirmation and we'll go ahead and tear that down and we'll start to see everything clean out of virtual center and the DR plan will be back ready to execute again for a full failover or a test failover. Here we can see the virtual machines are being powered off. Uh, and then delete it out of the inventory as well as off of the main data store. And then this DR site will be back to having no virtual machines in it. And we can start over again for, again, a full failover or a test failover. Back over on our DR plan, we can see that our plan is back to failover ready. 
with an RPO of six minutes. And once again, we have all of our options available to us. So this has been an overview of the new Cohesity site continuity disaster recovery plans, uh, as well as covering data pools and data sites. So hopefully this was useful and leave us some comments and watch the next video.